church organization and unity. The church was initiated by Jesus for the purpose of spreading the gospel and also as a place for us to share our salvation. As such, it represents everything that Christ stood for, its way of organizing and its leadership who oversee the body of believers. The topic is really sensitive to us as Adventists lately. Can church organization demand unity? Where does diversity end if it does? Can unity be administrated? We may have theories and we may think that we understand it, but apparently it's not working very well. It's sad because people from each side are deeply shaken. I don't expect to find a magical answer out of this lesson, but hopefully we can find food for thoughts and prayer. Now think about this. One of the first key points that the lesson makes is that we don't need the church or church hierarchy in order to receive the benefits of what Christ has done for us. Now, the church is important, very important, but it's also important to properly understand it. The church is not a mean for salvation. It's a vehicle to help us express and manifest this salvation to the world. How is the church organized? Like every other organized human group, it's like in a pyramid structure. However, on the top of it, there is no president or CEO, but it's Christ himself, the head of his body. And those who take positions as leaders, they are chosen for a certain mandate. And this is important because it allows every lay person to vote their voice for or against any decision made or for or against for any leadership nominees. As long as the scripture remains the leading principle for the, for the members, Jesus has a way of remaining the head of his body. Mm -hmm. Leadership in the church is a hot topic. I just want to read the quote in the lesson from the Desire of Ages. The church is built upon Christ as its foundation. It is to be Christ as its head. It's not to depend upon men or be controlled by men. Many claim that the position of trust in the church gives them authority to dictate what other men shall believe and what they shall, shall do. This claim, God does not sanction. The Savior declares, all we are brethren, all are exposed to temptation and are liable to error. Upon not finite being can we depend for guidance. The rock of faith is the living presence of Christ in the church. Upon this, the weakest may depend. And those who think themselves the strongest will prove to be the weakest unless they make Christ their efficiency. No need to comment. So far we have determined that the structure of our church organization is like a pyramid. However, Jesus turned the world upside down when he instructed his disciples to look at leadership not as a power position, but as a servant to everybody else. In such a way, the authority gets transferred not to the leader, but to those who seek the truth, those who test the new teachings to the lay people. Serving leadership. We think that we get it, but I think that we need to learn all the time. Our church is not a top-down organization. It's from the bottom up. And it's about every one of us. It's about our journeys. <laughs> Unity is fostered as we walk together without being the same. Now, when Christ is accepted, someone is not happy. And someone will try to break that, break that, in any possible way. And namely, here is the issue of unity provoked. What teachings are being preached? Unity in the church can be disturbed by the false teachings. Since the authority right now lies not in the power of one man, but in all the congregation, the threat of branching out the, the body of believers in different doctrinal beliefs is very much possible. 
And Paul is very concerned about that, and he advises Titus in chapter 1, verse 9, to encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. In other words, we have to work constantly to preserve the unity in the church by preaching what's proven already to be God's word. People are easy to influence. It's sad when a close person gets estranged in the church, when the love is lost, when there is blame, judgment. And sometimes the issues may be created by people with special agendas as well. And our safeguard for all this, according to the message to Timothy and the lesson is to follow, teach, and implement what we find in the scriptures. And to do so with long suffering and patience. Now, the lesson asks us the question, what happens when somebody breaks the unity in the church consciously? It could be a doctrinal unity or church life or church practice kind of a unity. It's tough to even talk about it. We call it church discipline. Jesus advised us, advised us to go and talk in person with the brother and sister in fault, and hopefully we win them over. If not, we can bring two or more witnesses with us. And if again they don't listen, we bring it before the church. After that, if they don't listen, it's church discipline. Treat them as pagans and tax collectors. Jesus' words, not mine. What's the purpose of all this? To preserve the unity. Challenges will come always. It's how we deal with them. Apostle Paul's advice goes even deeper and encourages us to approach any person in fault with the intent to restore them gently. It should be done as we would do it for family or as we would like it to be done to us. And we should not forget the context of all this. We are not to be judges to each other or to impose one's views on another. It's all in the context of why we are organized as a church. It's not so we can be saved, but so we can be a vehicle for God to bring salvation to the world. At last, the lesson brings us to unity that is driven by our common mission given by Christ go and make disciples. And making disciples for Christ is not a one-man job. Somehow we have to help each other. Somehow we have to organize together. And if we carry the spirit of Christ, we will recognize our spiritual talents and gifts. And with humble heart, we will feed in ourselves in the body with mission. Maintaining the unity in this body will carry forward the mission. So, we can all work toward this unity and not division. Let's stay focused. This lesson doesn't answer all our struggles and questions, but hopefully it can help us to take a step back and look at the purpose of all this from a better perspective. We do need God's help. We're almost at the end, and we're going to be wrapping our study next week with the lesson, Final Restoration of Unity. Mm 